Hello everyone. So in the last video we talked about kind of the mechanics of how the array based list, which is what Python's regular list uses, um, how those what the mechanics of that data structure are. Okay. So what I want to show you now though is a little Python program, and you can download this off of Canvas and play with it, that actually shows you what it, the difference between big O of one and big O of n really looks like on a real machine. Um, when we talked about t of n and counting computational steps and big O of n, we said, you know, we don't count these things in real time because everybody's computer is different. It can run, some computers run faster than others. Some people have other programs running in the background that can change things. So actual units of time, like seconds, are not good measures. And that's true. But we can still demonstrate the real impacts of big O of 1 versus big O of n uh, on a real machine, right? So let's do that with this timer program. Um, and I encourage you to download it and play with it yourself. Okay? How does it work? Um, you, I'm not going to expect you to know all of this, but I want you to kind of follow along. So how does this code work? What is it going to do? Um, the first thing I do is I'm setting this variable to a certain size, and what I do up here is this is kind of some, this is called a list comprehension in Python. You're not expected to know these things. They're kind of cool. You can look them up. Chapter one of your book talks about them. They're pretty neat, but you don't need to know them. Okay, but what is this doing? What does this line of code do? What it does is it generates this many, whatever size is, uh, random numbers between 0 and 10 and shoves them into a list. That's it. right? So it's creating a list here with this many numbers in it. And for my purposes, I'm, I really don't care about how, what the numbers are or how, uh, I only care how many there are. Right, so that's all I care about. I'm going to use this, this random nums, to help me do my testing. Okay, so I want to have lists of different size to do this testing with. That's what's going to demonstrate the big O. Okay, all right, so I generate this list that I'm going to use to test. And again, the contents of it aren't important, really. The size of it is. Okay, now I'm going to start a stopwatch. Okay, um, so I print out starting timer, and then I record the current system time. So Python has this built-in module called time and it has a method on it called perf counter for performance counter and all this really does is it asks the uh, clock that's inside the computer hey what time is it? Write this nanosecond and it is down to that level of precision. What time is it this nanosecond? And we're not talking about like it's 1230 in the afternoon. It's you know just I need to mark this precise instance in time. And we grab it and we store it in a variable and we call that the start time. Okay. Now down here below, this is where we're going to play around with the big O of 1, the big O of n operations. So what do I do? I make a new empty list and for each num in random nums, right? So this means that the length of random nums is our n when computing big O uh, f of n. Right? This is n is the input size. n is our n, the input size that drives uh, efficiency. Okay. All right, let's put it that way. All right. All I am doing here is appending. I loop through this list and I append each element of the list into a different list. Okay, it's a it's a silly kind of nonsensical thing to do, but what I want to show is that append. How, what is the big O of append? Well, it's big O of one. So that means that as the size of n grows here, the time it takes to append should actually not change much right? It shouldn't change whether I'm appending to a list with a million items, a billion, a thousand, or ten. The time should be pretty much the same, okay? So that's what I want to demonstrate. All right, so I do a bunch of appends, right, that are dependent on how many items are in random nums, 
Okay, but it shouldn't matter. That's what we're saying with big O of 1. It shouldn't matter how many items are here. Okay, so we'll do that experiment. I will grab the time that we stopped, what's the instance of time that we finished everything, all this appending stuff, and now how much time actually transpired, and this will calculate it and print it out. Okay, all right, so let's run this with a list of a thousand items. I'm generating it, and then I'm going to append them to a new list. Okay, all right, so I run it with a thousand items, and this took 0 0.00155 seconds to run. That's 155 microseconds. That's an imperceptible amount of time to you as a human being. The computer can recognize it, but it's so short you can't you can't even cogitate what it is. Okay, fast. If you run this code, yours is probably going to be a little bit different. Okay, that's fine, um, because again, it depends on your computer, how fast your computer is, what else you're doing. If you got Fortnite running in the background, or you're rendering some big video in Adobe Premiere going to be slower. That's okay. Um, let me increase this size. Now again, what we're testing here is list.append, and we're asserting that it's big O of 1. So the input size shouldn't matter. Okay, I've got about 155 microseconds with a thousand items. Let's increase it to 10,000. Okay, it's a little bit longer. Just a tiny bit. Uh, we're up to a millisecond now. Let's run it again. Okay, 1.288 milliseconds. Let's run it again. You can even see the variance in just my little computer here, right? Um, every run is a little bit different just based on what Windows is doing in the background. So it did actually make a little bit of a difference. A little bit big O of 1 here. Um, all right, now it's down to just 1 millisecond. Let's up the game to 100,000. Okay. This kind of makes sense in a way, though, right? Um, big O of 100,000. This is 100 times bigger than it was with just 1,000. So there's a constant factor at play here. Remember, what does big O mean? It means that your algorithm is less than some function times a constant factor. Well, I'm increasing things by a constant factor here, right? So I, I do expect things to kind of move up just a little tiny bit some of the time, okay? Right? Just a little bit. Now, what's actually happening, though, the reason that append is taking a little bit longer time is because of... Remember every once in a while when you append and when you grow, you run out of space and then it has to copy it to a new thing? That's what's happening here. Um, let's try it with popping, okay? So if I go back, what does popping do? Popping removes from the end of the list. So let me just, instead of appending to test list, let me, um, let me try to pop here from random nums. This may not may not allow me to do that. Actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make test list be a copy of random nums. Okay, random nums dot copy. And I don't want to start include that in the timer because that might take some time. But now let's pop. Okay, let's run this. Okay, so popping. I popped a thousand items and it took a hundred microseconds. Let's pop ten thousand items. It took one millisecond. A hundred thousand items. It took twelve milliseconds, thirteen milliseconds. So the size is is kind of mattering here. Now it's taken a lot longer, right? But I'm changing by a constant factor. This is constant time. So that's it's okay. It's not bad. And you can see it's fast too, right? It's fast. Um, let's try something that is big O of n. Okay. Let's get back to where we were. Um, instead of appending to the end, which is big O of 1, our other option for inserting data into the list is to insert it. Okay. So let's insert at index 0 every number. Okay, so basically I'm creating a copy of this list. 
um, but in reverse order. Let's run this. Okay, size 100. Still fast, right? Still fast, size 1,000. Still pretty darn fast, right? Just 300 microseconds. It is a little slower than a pending. Remember, when we talk about big O, one of the things that we asserted was we only care about large values of M. Whenever things really start to get up, that's when we're going to see things really start to slow down. Right, because computers are inherently fast. They can do billions of operations per second. We're not really going to feel the pain until our size gets up around 10,000 or 30,000 or 100,000. So let's get up to 10,000. Let's see if we notice a delay. Okay, not too bad. We're down to two hundredths of a second, though. Okay, compare that to a pend. What was a pend? A pend was a lot faster than that two hundredths of a second to insert one millisecond to append. Hmm. Let's bump this bad boy up to say 50,000. Half a second. Okay. Getting much slower now. Okay. Inserting a hundred thousand items took almost two seconds on my computer. Appending a hundred thousand items takes what 15 milliseconds that's a big difference right that's actually a big difference may not seem like a big difference to you but if you're sitting there waiting on your computer to calculate something and it takes two seconds to calculate something that's kinda slow in computer terms right let's bump this up to a million okay and we're gonna have to sit here a little bit you know, probably 20, 30 seconds or so um, before this comes out. Um, so your choice, what am I trying to get at here? Your choice of algorithm matters. Insert is a big O of N algorithm. Append is a big O of one algorithm. So given the option, you should append, right? We're always going to try and do the most efficient thing. Now, it could be the case that the most efficient thing doesn't solve the problem you need to solve. That's a limitation of computing. But your goal as a computer scientist, as someone who does solve problems using computers, is you have to recognize and understand that there are trade-offs and that there are sometimes better ways of doing things for solving really common problems. So in the coming videos, we are going to talk about um, some ways to solve kind of common challenges you run into in computing. And your choice of how you solve them is going to say whether your solution is good or not, right? We're kind of evolving to the point where just getting the right answer is not going to be good enough. This is bad, right? I'm, I'm inserting a list of a million items. A million items is nothing to a computer. It's one megabyte. Your computer can store 100,000 megabytes uh, at least, right? Or a million megabytes. So this is nothing. This is no size at all. Appending here, I get the answer real fast. Inserting, I've made a huge blunder. Okay, So we want to make sure we understand what we're doing when we're writing and using algorithms. I'm tired of waiting. This thing's still going. It'll finish eventually, but I don't have the time. But think about, you know, why is this so bad? It's because when I insert at the bottom, when I insert at index 0, I've got to move everything after index 0 down a slot. Well, as my list grows and grows, i got to move more and more and more. Not fun, right? Not fun. Anyway, all right, that's it. Play around with this. See if you can make Look at the other big O of N algorithms. Look at removing from a list. That's another big O of N algorithm. Um, try it out. Compare it with another big O of one algorithm like popping um, and or assigning to reading variables, printing out variables that you get out of the list. Okay, Play with it. Make sure you really understand what's going on with this big O of one versus big O of N stuff and know the big O's for your array list operations. All right? See you in the next video.